everybody. Welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm your co-host, Steve. And I'm Josh. And I'm Tyler. All right, yeah, Tyler, his audio is a little low. We'll, I won't be able to fix that in post, but it's fine. It's fine. It's all going to happen. <laughs> so if you're watching this live, this is the horriblest podcast in terms of technical issues ever, but not surprising. It's literally, we've been fighting with them for an hour. Um, but... Speed run, as somebody just said, I use Fedora, by the way, he said in the chat, so we're going to do a speed run. Uh, this is Linux cast. We use, we talk about Linuxy things. We're going to try to do this in under an hour uh, for the first time because we, 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 Tyler's literally starving to death. Um, Steve's phone is at 39% <laughs> and Matt is sick of this podcast already and we're just getting started. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. It's fine. It's going to be right. I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, anyways, the Linux cast talk about Linux things, and we have a topic for you. We're going to talk about Wayland later on. Steve's going to lead us through that. But before we do, we're going to do a very, very quick lightning round of what we've done this week in open source. So, Steve, very quickly, what have you been up to this week? Updating my ISOs, KDE frameworks, updating, fixing uh, Calamares, and enjoying my Android phone. That was the best lightning round ever, Steve. It was perfect. Golf claps. We, we you guys needed some claps, so we had to clap. <laughs> All right, Josh, uh, Lightning Speed, what have you been up to this week? Uh, I haven't been doing anything in Linux this week. I've read all these books. Lame. Uh, Tyler, <laughs> what have you been up to this uh, week? <laughs> I've been messing around with a new uh, laptop I got. It's an Intel White Book OEM Intel laptop. You can find it on eBay. It's really cheap. It's real nice, uh, and it's very upgradable. All right, and uh, me personally, I've done very little, mostly work all damn week. That's usually that's what I've been doing. So I'm very boring, not as boring as reading all those books. I, I make fun of them because I, I read a lot of books too, but it's just fun to make fun of Josh. Um, anyways, um, that was the least informative open source our week in open source ever, but we're in a rush. Anyways, uh, so our main topic this week this week comes from Steve. So Steve, lead us off, friend. All right. So this top, the topic of the week, uh, as Ma Matt mentioned it earlier, is going to be about Guaylan. I don't know why I had dildos on my brain, but... <laughs> um, <God damn. laughs> okay. Um, uh, it's going to be Guaylan. Um, uh, uh, in all seriousness... It's not uh, where they go, uh, bro. Uh, not where they go. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm getting over a uh, end of summer cold, and I'm uh, semi high on Tylenol. Not two words you're gonna hear in a sentence. But uh, Wayland is the topic of the week, and it's going to come as a surprise to to everyone when I when I'm going when I say this. Wayland, I do not hate Wayland. I have no gripe with Wayland. I uh, just respect the developers and what they say. They say Wayland is currently in, in its mid 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 stages, not yet in its final stages, and they don't recommend to use it on production hardware. They they I talked to some of the developers, two of the developers. They mentioned this to me, and they were very adamant on uh, on a on a sentence. Not all applications are yet ready to be adopted on Wayland. It's not them to be blamed. It's mostly mostly applications either refusing to jump on board causing issues uh, or jumping on board too early and causing more issues but what i will say uh, about this is we do need users to adopt wayland because it's the user reports error reports that will help wayland grow and fix unforeseen issues they did not expect but uh, in all reality wayland is not ready for mass adoption mass adoption but it can be used however with a lot of limitations and caveats i don't hate wayland and uh, to prove it to everyone the next release coming in a week or so uh, from zero linux kde basically and gnome will uh, will be shipping with wayland uh, included but not enabled so we can finally get over this zero linux hates wayland I'm using Wayland on my newly uh, acquired or uh, people are going to say that that was a shitty deal. It is, but I don't care. Uh, I exchanged my Steam Deck for a 2017 7th gen laptop, but this laptop will help me build Wayland, the Zero Linux Wayland support, 
uh, where the Steam Deck won't. So I needed something that will help me continue working on Zero Linux rather than something that will remain on the shelf gathering dust. So uh, with that being said, I am going to be uh, uh, switching on that laptop. I'm going to be switching to a distribution, not so much a distribution than Arch install. So basically, it's the uh, vanilla Arch ISO with a script integrated into it that will allow you to install NWG thing. And Josh will explain in a bit what that is because uh, he's encyclopedia of the team here. <laughs> yeah, we just rely on you for that kind of shit. But uh, it's basically Hyperland with, uh, turned into a semi-desktop environment. So, Josh, explain encyclopedia style what NWG is. NGW, NWG. Okay, so in order to explain what NWG shell is, I need to explain what the graphic stack is on, on your Linux machine. So, okay. uh, when we're talking in, the, in terms of Wayland, what, what is Wayland actually? Wayland is actually just a set of protocols that tell app that is just, think of it as like an instruction book or a set of guidelines. That's all Wayland actually is. Uh, there, there is some code, there is some libraries that were written for Wayland, but it in in the scope, that's what Wayland is. Uh, when we when uh, Steve was talking about this thing called Hyperland, what Hyperland is 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 a compositor. Basically, what a compositor is is much more similar to what the Xorg server is. Which, if you've heard people talk about Xorg, they typically talk about the Xorg server, which is the thing that actually draws the display up onto your screen. And we might talk about window managers as well. Which window window managers don't necessarily exist on Wayland. But uh, what what they're functionally from like what we're talking about, they're basically the same thing. Uh, compositors are window managers. They're just not actually window managers. They do a lot more than just manage windows. But what NWG shell is, is NWG shell is just like a shell that sits on top of a compositor. So think of it as like your panels, uh, your menus and stuff like that. And That's all NWG all the, shell and, really is. And, and NWG shell also includes NWG elements like the doc written in gtk uh, a gui written in gtk to create your uh, hyperland or sway because it's got both but it, it allows you to build your configuration using a uh, graphical user tool uh, instead of having to open a document and uh, or configuration file and start typing away like for, for example in my case i'll be like an idiotic moron staring at that freaking configuration file not making has the tails of what does what the with a graphical tool that answers my question so i wanted a desktop environment uh, on top of uh, hyperland because i really love the effects in on hyperland and and everything and i love the rainbow animated thing that josh introduced like way back when so uh, to be able to do that with a graphical tool that's all I wanted. And a doc, because I'm a latte doc uh, fanatic, because I have a MacBook and I love the MacBook UI. So uh, let me I ask you that. Let, let me ask this question. Uh, I don't need to, we don't need to get into the, the specifics of window managers and stuff right now. I, I just, we don't need to get into there. What, what I want to know, just a quick poll on the distro that you're running right this second, the thing that you're using to record the podcast, who's actually using Wayland? I am. I am. Not. I'm not. Okay, so it's 50-50. I'm assuming, you're, Josh, you're using the KDE version of Wayland, yeah? The, the Wayland session yeah, for I'm KDE? On, uh, I'm in KDE Plasma right now using Wayland. And you okay. too? Yeah? All right. So I'm using Qtal. It's just the XOR, regular XOR version. So And, and Steve, what, or uh, Tyler, what are you in right now? You're the... Top OS. Uh, I'm running on my laptop with NVIDIA card. I'm not willing to, you know, <laughs> mess around. <laughs> so, we're on NVIDIA, so just yeah. just to kind of broaden the topic instead of getting buried in the specifics of NWG or whatever the hell you're talking about, Steve. Let's talk about Wayland itself. We don't need to get into the yeah. specifics, right? Um, okay. No, no, hold on a second. I, I'll I'll take this over <laughs> for for a second. Well, you said something earlier that was really interesting. You said you talked to a Wayland developer and you said that it's in the midpoint of its development and that it's not ready yeah. for prime time use. My issue has uh, with Wayland has always been not that it exists, but that it's been pushed on literally everyone as the default by all the major distributions. So Ubuntu has done it. Fedora has done it. 
Uh, okay. Debian at this point has done it. You know, so if, if you're using a, a mainstream distro, at least most of them have turned Wayland on as default. This brings me, you just attacked the second part of uh, the discussion, and I know this is a lightning round, uh, so I'll attack it right on. Uh, I mentioned that to the developers. They were like, every distro is free to, uh, they're not against distros switching to it, but it's preferable. They, they, all they said was it's preferable not to set it as default currently in its current state, but a lot of distros just want to be the first to do something. So they're doing it. I agree with you. They shouldn't be doing that, especially uh, the, uh, in its uh, current state. But what can we do to stop them? They, they will do whatever they will do. But Zero Linux will not be one of those distros. Uh, I'm just including the Wayland packages to allow users to mess around with Wayland. I recommend uh, to mess around with them, but I do not recommend to use it on pro as a production, as the main session that you log uh, onto. But I'm going to say uh, one thing that will contradict what I just said is uh, since I'm using Wayland right now to talk to you guys, the, the the only difference that I noticed, major difference, and that's a that's something that makes me want to use Wayland more. I can't because a lot of applications I use haven't jumped on board yet. But smoothness, like Latidoc, I don't know how to show this, but I don't want to mess up the the, the stream. But uh, when I hover the mouse over the dock over Latidoc, it could be a Latidoc issue. I don't know. But if I do it on Xorg, it skips every other frame. It's like very jittery, and sometimes you see the, the, the label of one icon, whereas I'm on a different icon on the other end of the dock. Whereas on Wayland, it keeps up. It keeps up. It keeps up. It's instant. It's smooth. There's no, not a single dropped frame. Uh, and the whole experience is very smooth. Dragging windows. And another major thing is that it I have three monitors with three different refresh rates. No problem on Wayland. Pro big, big problem on X11. So there's a lot of good things with Wayland, but they're not enough to be a, to, to make it adoptable as a, a as a main production. Josh, you're the you're the fanboy here of of the four of us. Explain other than security benefits, which are prim primarily a developer focused reason to use Wayland. What are good reasons to use Wayland? What, 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 sell me on Wayland, would you please? Okay. So, Matt, have you ever had the fight screen turn? Yeah, but I know how to fix it. Yeah? What if I told you that you never had to fix it if you use Wayland? Like, actually never had to fix it. I mean, it would save me two seconds. Yeah, it would save you two seconds. But let's just say that you didn't know how to fix it. Then I'd need to learn how to fix it. <laughs> I'm well, being, I'm gonna, being, well, okay, Josh. What? Haven't you haven't okay. you learned yet that so, you're dealing with Matt? You can't you can't convince Matt of anything. So Wayland has a lot of nice features. For one thing, like I mentioned, it, it enforces it it enforces perfect window drawing. Uh, so th by default, VSync is enabled on Wayland. And yes, it's it does affect any video games. It's not going to be anymore. Uh, oh. It's going okay. it's going to be an application bypass to, to uh, run the screen tearing. But yes. the compositor itself will still be running with, v with vertical sync. Uh, that's and it does support FSR, or not FSR, but FreeSync and G-Sync as well. So all all the things should work. It's then, amazing uh, for gaming. It's amazing for and, gaming. And because this is running at the display server level, that means that your that means that your input delay is not going to be nearly as bad as it would be on X X11 or even on Windows. So uh, sorry, Kudu, you're wrong in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's also amazing for gaming. If you if you want to game, it's better to game on Wayland than it is to game on for most of the well, games, not all. Yes, and that's no, not really true. Yes um, and no. In theory, yes, it should be because you're not you're not running a dedicated actual server that's then communicating with the client. So yeah, there, there, a Wayland environment is going to be theoretically lighter, and because Wayland is also just a newer newer software stack as well. It's not going to have like the past forty years of of uh, support for X eleven calls. So uh, in general, the code base is a lot cleaner. It's a lot more maintainable than Xorg, which means that, that uh, when it comes to gaming, just an important point to make out is when it comes to gaming, almost every game you're going to play, uh, especially if it's over a couple to a few years old, it's going to be running in X Wayland. 
because it uses most games make use of SDL, <laughs> and SDL does not support Wayland yet. So they are working on it, but I don't, yeah, I don't for more know for more modern it. games though, it's uh, like there. I can give I can give an example: Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal on Wayland, it, and especially that it's a Vulcan Vulcan title. Wow, just wow! I I couldn't believe my eyes. I was getting a hundred and ten FPS on Wayland, where I was getting around eighty FPS uh, between seventy and between sixty and eighty FPS well, on X eleven. Yes. If I if I continue on here, here's a benefit that you might notice as well, Matt, where you've mentioned previously that you have had issues with monitors going to sleep. Mm-hmm. Wayland supports dynamically plugging monitors, unlike X11. X, because the way that X11 is written, when the Xorg server starts up, it's going to index every single screen that's on the system. And yes. every time you plug in a new screen, the the entire X session technically actually restarts every time you Correct. plug or unplug a screen. Uh, same thing happens with DPMS. So when, you're, when your screens turn off through DPMS, X11 is going to restart itself, and then it's going to say, see, hey, there's another monitor. So it's going to shut that monitor off again, and it's going to restart itself. <laughs> It's it's a really hacky protocol just to get multi monitor support working on Xorg, especially if mm. you're using something like a laptop or a docking station. You probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes it just doesn't work, or you know, like say you have a multi monitor system and you just let system screens turn off after a set amount of time of system idle time. Wayland natively supports that, just out of the box, and because mm. it because of the support that they built for the multi monitor configuration. That also means that like your your screen refresh rate. So on my on my system, I have I have three different monitors on my system. I have yep. a all my monitors are capable of sixty hertz to seventy five hertz. I can run seventy five hertz on one screen, sixty hertz on another screen on Wayland. That does not work on Xorg because Xorg relies off relies off of a uh, I can't remember the library name off the top of my head right now. The library that Wayland uses to actually draw the window. It's not XRander. It's not that. But the way that Xorg works is that technically when you're when you're launching a graphical session on Xorg, you're actually just spawning a big window. Yeah. And uh, that big window w- is what stretches across all the screens. And uh, yeah. they are just one massive screen. So that's why I sit, that's how uh, you can just take a window and just drag it from one to another, because technically that window is sitting within a window, within a window, within a window. <laughs> Yeah, and it will it will run, and on X11 it will run as even if you have a monitor that's 144 hertz, it will run at the slowest monitor's refresh rate. So that's a big problem. Uh, I have a 144 hertz main display, but I, I cannot get it to run at 144, especially in games, because I have 65 hertz, 144 hertz, 75 hertz, 60, 75, 144, and it oh. will run at 60. Okay, uh, the library that I was talking about is called Xenorama. That, that's that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, so somebody so, in the uh, somebody in the chat asked me what it would take to get me to actually like and use Wayland. Um, I talked about this in a video recently, guys. I make videos for a YouTube channel, and right now OBS doesn't support Wayland out of the box, at least on a, on a window manager. I don't know if that's the truth on a desktop environment. I don't use desktop environments, but if you're going to use Wayland or you use OBS on Wayland in a window manager of some kind, you have to have Portal set up, and you have to have certain environment variable set this is exactly what i meant when the uh, w- what the me- guys over at when meant there it's application dependent and if applications don't support it, especially when it comes to product media production there's a lot of things that go b- behind the scenes uh, 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 when you're doing okay. media production uh, that wayland is still well applications on wayland still and specifically talking they mentioned something along the lines of hdcp also, oh, if you, look, if we're if, being clear, OBS on Wayland does work. You just need the de- you do need a portal like which. Yeah, but it does work, but it's hacky. It's hacky. No, no, it's not. Tyler, no, it's not. It works, no, it's Tyler, you talk, fine. not Steve. But it, it works. It works perfectly fine. Uh, all you do, all, all you need is a Paul kit installed when you're using a window manager, because on Wayland, it needs your permission to be able to access the screen. You so, know, you know, the to, one thing that doesn't work well on OpenSUSE. Paul kit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's a you problem then, Matt. <laughs> that's no, that would be an open source a problem. <laughs> they need to fix no. it. But but it, but, but, yeah. but in all uh, in all seriousness, I want a burger. Um, um, <laughs> why 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 did you say that? 
<laughs> that's great. <laughs> just random. <laughs> no, but uh, 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 this is uh, this is another. This is part three of the discussion, and I mentioned it to Josh or before the podcast two hours, three hours ago. Que- the question I'm going to be asking Chat here, uh, and since you guys are seeing Chat, you you'll be reading it because my browser is currently closed. When it comes to Waylon, a lot of distributions like let's say Fedora. Well, as far as desktop environments are concerned, GNOME, everyone has their own implementation of Wayland. Should there be a standard for Wayland so everybody adopts the same implementation of Wayland so everybody knows what to expect from Wayland across the board? Why should we always have to relearn what to do on Wayland on every different desktop environment? And this, it's, it's why the different implementation? Okay, so the well, reason for that is because Wayland is there Wayland does not have a server. What what Wayland official projects that you do have are really just tools to check to see what what things are doing and how they're and how they can do it. Now, uh, I see somebody mentioning WL roots. What WL roots is it's a library for a compositor. But uh, generally generally it's the compositors that that are supposed to be doing all this. Now, GNOME has its own compositor because GNOME had had the second compositor. The first compositor was actually a uh, what is the Wayland reference compositor? You... Man, I'm googling stuff here. I'm. I'm it's not I'm WL not... roots. Uh, no. Uh, they they no they have oh shit I know what you're talking about. It's, it's not mutter. It's Weston. not mutter. It's Weston. Weston. Yeah. Weston. Yeah. Yeah. Weston was the first Wayland compositor, and it's really just oh, like yeah. the example. Uh, the one that came right after it was Gnome's mutter, which mutter is a is a compositor. Now. Because there is no Wayland server, these compositors are lifting that load themselves. And the and each compositor is doing its own different thing. Now, WL Roots is just a library of tools that a compositor uses. Technically, Sway, Hyper, Hyperland, are, and uh, those things are what uses WL Roots. Now, th- that's a whole different ecosystem. KDE Plasma has its own ecosystem. So they're really just a bunch of different ecosystems. The, the way that the portal spec is made is purely for, like, your applications, like your OBS studio. Now, uh, Matt said that he was having issues, you know, with, like, setting environment variables in, in, in OBS just to, just for OBS to run properly in uh, a Wayland environment. That's actually not OBS's fault. Because if you look at all the OBS, OBS official tools, their, their official make file that's available on GitHub, they set all those environment variables as compile flags, which means that if you have to declare an, ex- de- declare an environment variable just to launch OBS on a Wayland session, that means that your package manager disabled Wayland. So you need to be filing a bug report on the package in your distribution. So what, you're, what you're trying to say is that we should all be using Gen 2 and compiling it from source. Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> no, don't, don't even have to be. You just, <laughs> file, just, you just need to have... You just need to tell the package manager to fix his crap. <gasps> well, the reason why, Gosh, what because, do you do? and if you were using a Flatpak version, which is the official version, that's what I use is the Flatpak version, and it never works for me. Okay, and when I say never works, it doesn't mean that I can't get to launch, I can't get to record a webcam. It does all those things. It's specifically with screen recording, which I do a ton of. It just most okay, of the time I'll, I'll just explain, doesn't work. I'll, okay, uh, Matt, I have the solution for that. Open Not use Wayland. That's that's no, no, no. literally. Oh, oh. The solution. Oh no, no. <laughs> Open flat seal, and I noticed that. I noticed that too. But it 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 works flawless for me on KDE Wayland. I can share screens. I can do uh, everything no problem. Uh, you have to open flat seal and play around with the Wayland and the X11 well, X Wayland uh, flags. Let's, let's, in the flat let's see seal. if we can troubleshoot Matt's issue right now. Matt, uh, no. w- what Wayland sessions have you tried with OBS Studio? Hyperland, Sway, KDE. Okay, and then you ha- you have installed the XDG the XDG desktop portal packages for them. Depending on which one of those I was using, so like when I use Hyperland, I use the Hyperland portal. When I use Sway, I use the regular WL XDG portal. portal. Yeah, the WL Roots portal. Yep, and then with KDE, the KDE has their own portal. Then okay, after Super you installed huge. the portals, did you exit the did you exit the graphical session and re and relaunch it at all? Yeah, I rebooted. Okay, so it's and not. Uh, Flat so seal. What it's flat seal. That's like, what it did uh, with the, me. If I didn't set the flat seal uh, X11 Wayland or whatever flags, it didn't work. It didn't allow me to share screens. But as soon as I selected the right one, 
was able to select whatever screen to receive. So when I was having the problem specifically with Hyperland, I was I joined the Hyperland Discord and I got into the thing and I was you guys gonna remember this has been months and months ago, so I don't remember the exact errors and stuff like that. But the, the biggest problem was that the actual option in Discord to grab a screen or to grab a, a window or a screen what didn't even exist. Like it wasn't even there. Um, like it wasn't an option to select in like you, okay. you, so the so that that's a Discord limitation. It even had that nothing. Disc- no, no, it had nothing to do with Discord. It well, was, Discord, you can't share a screen on Discord. All, no, no, I wasn't on. trying to. I was literally trying to capture a monitor. Had I couldn't they even had Discord running. It was literally in OBS you, when I, when I wanted uh, to go and, and uh, add, a, a, add a about, scene. Yeah, you you do that. You click the okay, plus so button it and it comes. Like, even like even the, the developer of Hyperland had no running. clue what was going on. Now, granted, this was uh, not on I, OpenSUSE. This was on whatever. Just, it was probably Fedora at that point, but it just couldn't get yeah, it to work. I'll agree with Vaxer on that one. I've never heard of that because even if you can't screen share or something on Discord, the button should still be there. The it's, button shouldn't disappear. It has nothing to do. I, if I said Discord, I misspoke. I meant OBS. On OBS, yeah. uh, oh, on OBS, you press the press button, and, and in the bu- bu- the menu that comes up, one of the things that should be there that should be, should say something like uh, screen capture, and then in, in parentheses pipe wire, right? Correct. Correct. That that should be there. That option didn't exist. Like it wasn't there. There was no option oh. for screen capture in OBS oh. whatsoever. Like it just didn't exist. Oh, man. And and that was there with the a, that was with the environment variable set and a reboot afterwards to make sure that it was oh, yeah. it was well, running, well, and with the proper let's portal. Be, let's be clear: that button missing should only happen with the actual package itself inside a flat pack. Because if that stuff exists there, even if you don't have Pipewire installed, it should it should still show up. It just obviously won't work. If you don't have Pipewire yeah. installed. That's, I mean, this probably was a dependency well, issue, it, but I mean, actually, actually, flat pack won't bring in Pipewire. So uh, if he, so if he's running a Wayland session and Pipewire is not running, then that would that then that would probably be why. Well, but if, running running session, and, it, but if he's running a Wayland session, but if he's running a Wayland session, Pipewire is running. It was probably for, it was probably uh, Fedora. Not true, actually, well, because you can you can you can launch a graphical Wayland session and not have Pipewire running. I've oh, never maybe. done that. Like I don't I even know. know how you would achieve uh, that. I mean, the point. No, but in my case, it was Fedora. And Fedora comes with Pipewire by default and has for yeah. uh, ages. Yeah. So. Oh, but in my case, it was just a, it was just a matter of flicking the correct yeah, it, option in Flatseal. It, it could be a permission issue with Flatpak as well. The, the, um, yeah. The, all of this stuff doesn't really matter because I mean, troubleshooting something that happened months ago is just you know really yeah, silly. But, but yeah, it's it's. It's it for me the uh, it it gets annoying having to relearn. Every time I switch to a desktop environment, I have to learn, relearn the implement, the Wayland implementation. It, it gets annoying, I, in my in my opinion, and that's just in my humble uh, humble opinion. Like I remember how to do things on Wayland on one desktop environment, having to relearn how to do it and the implementation on a different one. It, it's it's they, they should be there should be a some sort of a standard, not a, an actual general standard, but basic standard. Okay. The one, the one, the okay. So the one thing that works, you can say whatever negative things you want about XOR. You can say all of them. There, it's insecure. It's really old. It's bloated. It has thirty years of code, b- legacy code behind it that obviously makes it really hard to maintain. All of those things are absolutely true. But you know the one thing about XOR that apps is also absolutely true. It works. Okay. If you want to record a video, it works. If you want to play a video game, it works. You know, and while I'm not saying that that doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be replaced, it doesn't need a thing is what I'm saying is that there are still a lot of workflows right now that if you want to do them on Wayland, it either doesn't work or requires a significant investment in time and knowledge in order to actually work. So right now, right now, this is what it requires. But when it really is baked and it's official and it's uh, uh, okay. So, so one, of the, one of the things that you hear when people review like a phone or something like that on YouTube, like you watch Mr. Mobile or MKBHD, you, you buy the product for what it is right now, not for what it's promised to be in the future. Okay. Exactly. Wayland okay. has, I'll, 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 you guys, all those things that Josh says sound fantastic, but those benefits, while 
here for some people right now aren't here for everybody right now it, especially i mean if you're running a, a, a nvidia card it's still a pain in the ass if you want to do certain workflows like i do like i, I want to just i just so if somebody asked what would it take to get wayland work what i want to be able to do is open up obs and just be able to record a video just like i do right now uh, that's what i want to be able okay. to do that's brody made brody made a dedicated video brody, brody robertson if you follow him i don't know but uh, uh Brody Robertson made a valid point in that video. It's like he went back to X11 for the exact same reasons that Matt is discussing. Because for video production, especially video production, it's not ready yet. And even the OBS people, uh, the OBS, uh, the, uh, the the Wayland, uh, the, those two developers were like, if you are in the media, if you're, you're a content creator, please don't use it. It simply that said these words. Please, we're not, we're not, they didn't go into details. It just said, it's not ready yet for, especially for media production. If you're a content creator, you're going to have to battle. You, you have to get through a lot of battles, get there, and still you're not going to be 100% there. So if you are a content creator, don't use Wayland. If you like to tinker, which a lot of, a lot of people use Linux for, to tinker, you can tinker with Wayland all you want. We need you to tinker. What the uh, Wayland people said, yes, we do. We want more people to, to, to jump on board Wayland for the tinkering purposes or for the testing purposes. They said testing. They didn't say tinker because professionals won't say tinker. For testing purposes, and they want their issue tracker to be filled with issues. They don't mind 100,000 issues as long as they're valid issues. And if, you know, if, if not many users jump on board of Wayland, there will be no, no issue reports. They need more people to adopt it. Maybe that's why some distros are making some well, of their spins use Wayland by default. Josh? Okay, so let's talk about distros for a minute here. The distros yeah. that are enabling Wayland by default, which ones are they? Uh, so a Dora. lot of the, the distros Dora. that ship GNOME, GNOME has been using Wayland by default for about six years now. So it kind of just makes sense that eventually they'll just leave it as the default. Now, Fedora is not for the average user. It says so on their website. The average desktop user probably shouldn't be using Fedora because Fedora is for developers. They want to push the Linux ecosystem forward. That is what Fedora has been doing for 20 plus years now. They're not going to change anytime soon. So Fedora sw hard switching off of X11 to Wayland makes sense because that's what Fedora has always done. What about Ubuntu? Yeah. Explain Ubuntu, Ubuntu to me. Ubuntu... Okay, uh, How many, they, they ship Wayland by default on they, there. They ship it, and they they have it enabled. In fact, it wasn't until 2204, the 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 LTS release, where they even considered uh, using uh, Wayland as the de as the default system on Ubuntu, and then they quickly went back on that after release. So if you're if you boot, boot 2204, it's very uh, Ubuntu will actually run a hard check to see what kind of hardware you're running, and it will disable Wayland it as the, by default. So, depending on like if you're using an NVIDIA card or something like that. But for the most part, Ubuntu's only ever enabled Wayland as the default on the non LTS releases. Which, if you know anything about the Ubuntu development model, you know that the one release that they care about is the okay. LTS release. Everything else is basically just like, here's a new feature we're trying out. We want to see what the community thinks. And also an important thing to keep in mind is Ubuntu, when they roll out Wayland, they also don't have to deal with nearly as many problems coming from their general user base because they are switching over to flat pack, or excuse me, to snaps and using snaps pretty much for everything. So it's much easier to pretty much guarantee that a majority they of control, their user yeah, base since, isn't going to have since, these problems. Since so, they control the app ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for them, because they control every app, they only they will uh, apparent uh, logically they will include all the apps that are ready for Wayland. But by including Wayland by default, you still have the X11 session. Uh, I think they would leave the X11 session to to be used by the to switch to be switched to by the user that they want to. But they will set it as default login. What I would like to see for just just for for a minute. It'd be so nice to be able to switch back and forth because I would like to be able to go out and test Hyperland or Sway or any of the newfangled Wayland 
window managers that are out there, but I can't use it as a daily driver. Okay, so that hey, means hey, that Matt, what? Do me a favor. Right now on your system, just install a Wayland compositor, and then in that same terminal, just launch the Wayland compositor. So uh, you're using OpenSUSE, so just zipper install Sway, and then just run Sway in the terminal. Now you have an entire Sway session inside your X11 session. Does it take over all the screens? No. It, it in fact, will spawn as a normal window. Yeah. So you can do that. He's like, mute. I'm doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> really right now. Do it right on the podcast. Why not? Let's, let's do it right now. With all its problems, for my use case, I just browse the internet, build my ISOs, and watch YouTube. Well, it just works. My use case. Uh, I play, uh, I'm currently trying, attempting to play Baldur's Gate 3. That turn-based, that combat mode just won't agree with me uh i keep dying at the beginning of the game right. I'm not well, technically i that. have sway up running on the screen right now it's freaking the fuck out but <laughs> yeah i mean you're launching a wayland session in, inside your x11 session all right so it's, it's the opposite of x wayland but okay how many terminals Primary did you display? Open? literally opened no terminals it just did that on its own <laughs> huh yeah, I, I closed it because it was Thank literally you, freaking out the whole system. So it's fine. Like I don't need to do that in the middle of the podcast. Uh, so that isn't not really the way I'd want to. I'd actually like to actually use it like in a actual proper way and switch back and forth. But it, it's not. I mean, you can do it. You just have to oh wow, install the proper portal, get it all set up, and then when I want to go back to X or install the other portal to go back to where I would normally I use it. For limited for the for the basic use case, not in media production or anything. If you just browse the internet, read some books, and build, compile a few packages and stuff like that, Wayland is perfectly usable. If that's all but, you do, though, Xorg does all those things too. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> Xorg. But but again, for me, Xorg, and I think it's an Nvidia X, uh, uh, Xorg thing. That, that, that there's a lot of drop frame. It, nothing is smooth. Nothing oh. is smooth. It's very Tyler. dragging window from from one monitor to, to to another feels janky. Whereas on Wayland, it's smooth like butter. Tyler, so. go ahead. If you well, honestly, the the only the only reason like if you don't give a shit, which most likely you shouldn't, you shouldn't care which one you're running, um, especially if you're doing you know just regular normal computer usage just browsing the web what you watch some videos maybe you do one video call here and there like every yeah. once in a while like wayland is just fine and the uh, and xorg are just fine either one use whatever's default with your system doesn't matter and then the only reason you should ever really consider trying out wayland is if you're running a laptop and just to see if it gets you extra battery life Really yeah. <laughs> I would agree on that one because I was getting extra battery life. I didn't mention that, but on my yeah. dang, janky laptop that's from 2017, uh, the battery is, isn't great on either or, but it's better on Wayland than it is on Xorg. That's another reason I'm using Wayland on that laptop, but I chose the wrong desktop environment for that on that aging laptop because GNOME loads it, most of it, if it's shell in the RAM, and so I Basically, I get when I boot it up uh, on cold boot for whatever reason on that specific laptop, it's using 2.5 gigs on cold boot. The reason I wanted to talk about Wayland is that nobody should hate Wayland. It's just don't expect so, the unexpected there's from four Wayland. Of us here. Let, let's have a vote. Is Wayland ready? No. 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 It's damn close, though. So Josh, I'll say you... yes with an asterisk. And the asterisk is another discussion. Okay. The asterisk, well, the asterisk is, is, is literally you should at least try. No. <laughs> the, the asterisk is literally like, like like if you're reading the small print when there's an asterisk in in, in this case the small print is no. <laughs> it's down no, in no, the no, no. notes in that like two that two size font. <laughs> no. And, and what I'm, nope. <laughs> what I'm going to end what I'm going to end with is the the following. If you so much as come to any Discord server and say Wayland is awesome. Wayland is, should be used, and Wayland works for me flawlessly. It should be adopted by everyone. I'll ban you myself uh, because it's not well, true. When you get, when you get banned from on this right Discord, now, you can come right on over to mine, and you'll be free to speak your mind. 
Um, you will be. It's called... a matter of speech. It's a matter of speech. It's not something I'll actually do. But <laughs> it's you shouldn't be doing that because if it works for you, that means your use case does not require any extra effort. But it doesn't mean all use cases are the same as yours. Yours <laughs> is not the use case that uh, that should. Be I'm the gonna use murder case Tyler in his whole face. <laughs> <laughs> McDanks, I'm gonna mur- <laughs> You're horrible. <laughs> Screw it. Then, then, let, let's get the thingies of the week done, and then Tyler can go dive into the ball pit of Mc- of of, of Bur- Big Mac. McDanks. McDanks. Then, McDanks. I was not gonna say it. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, thanks. Very quickly, Steve, your thingy of the week, please. My thingy of the week is called Vendetta. No, I don't have a vendetta against anyone. If I if I ever would have a vendetta, it's gonna be against. Gosh, but um, <laughs> uh, for mentioning Gen 2 way too much, uh, because I attempted Gen 2 and uh, the VM crashed. The, the whole application, the, the work manager. Got to give it a lot of memory, uh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, it's it's called Vendetta. It's better Discord for Android. The best way I can describe oh, it. Oh, I tried that. Uh, yeah. Vendetta is amazing. It's awesome. There's another version called uh, Alu- Alucord. But Alucord is very janky. It's not a good version. Vendetta is very simple. You just install the Vendetta Manager, install it through a Vendetta Manager on unrooted phones. You don't need it to be rooted on Android uh, to install it. Uh, you just install the Vendetta Manager, install it through that. What it will do is install the official version of Discord, then patch, apply a few patches on top, and it will allow you to install custom themes and plugins, just like better Discord. Mm-hmm. What you have to do is join their Discord. Go to the theme section if you want to install the theme. Click on the link of the theme. It will pop up with saying install. Just click install. It's going to install it. Go to the settings. There's a theme section or plugin section. You go to the theme section, select the theme. It will automatically apply. And if you have an AMOLED uh, device like I do, uh, I enabled an AMOLED theme. So every application on my phone is AMOLED. It allows you to install custom themes and plugins. And uh, you can even install uh, repositories so you can ha- have access to all the themes and plugins in one place and have fun have enjoy uh, enjoy it uh, just well android is open yeah like ios tyler your thingy of the week uh my thing of the week is Godot. beautiful you. beautiful engine it's a fan phenomenal gaming engine probably gonna love it um especially, especially with what's happening with yet. unity now <laughs> Yeah, I uh so I, I'm just real quick, I am uh like I've I've been using Unity for like a long time in personal projects and uh freelancing um and doing C sharp like uh, game scripting and stuff like that. Gotta be honest, uh Unity has literally burned their company to the ground the past couple of weeks. I mean, like there's hundreds of game studios that are leaving them, uh and Godot has gotten a lot of money um thrown their way since the whole whole ordeal and godot is actually very good um it's very difficult to learn uh coming from unity just because the beha- the way you set up and code behaviors is very different uh but pretty easy to learn and it's actually much simpler once you do learn it so i've been enjoying it it's great and uh, i swear to god i can feel my stomach eating itself it's i swear terrible. to god if that ingen guy in my chat says nuggies one more time <laughs> oh, who the hell mcdank and nuggies what, what happened to the english language i swear to god guys josh you're thinking of the week <laughs> my thinking of the week is called make mkv because you know i i hate blu-ray players shut <laughs> up i use make i used to use make mkv on every single thing and did you know that there's a uh, there's a hidden option if you know? Can uh, it, it, Josh talk well, lo- about why why you want to use it, please? Oh well, but basically, what Make MKV is it's it's a scriptable uh, ripping program for DVDs and Blu-rays. And uh, yes, I imagine that you're talking about the hidden option to automate it, where basically as soon as you plug in the disc, it'll immediately rip no, the disc and then it'll one. kick it back out. No, oh, one. did you know that I could do that? Yeah, I do. And the, the the hidden option is you can just, uh, instead of ripping it to an MKV file, you can rip the disk as is, make a clone copy on, in a folder on your 
uh, on your desktop. It's just called decrypt. You just check oh, that yeah. box. Okay. Yeah, Instead of making an MKV, that. it will rip the it will rip the thing. It will keep the menus. It will keep the special features. It will keep the commentaries, everything, without having to convert it. Because the the way it's normally used, you convert it converts a Blu-ray or a 4K Blu-ray into an MKV file. If you want the commentary, you have to rip another MKV file to replace the original audio with the commentaries. You will end up with two different files. So why do that? Just decrypt the, the whole folder. And all, most players today support playing from Blu-ray folder, decrypted Blu-ray folder. All right. My thing, first of all, all the people in the chatter band, they're all, every single one of them are trolling me saying nuggies right now. It's, it's I swear to God, I hate it. Uh, nuggies, 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 nuggies. nuggies. I, uh, uh, I'm gonna. I would like to take a moment to talk about Robo Nuggy, which is an amazing YouTuber. He posts he posts free BSD videos. I knew I'd heard that name. All right. <laughs> Anyways, my thing, really quickly, my thingy of the week is Vivaldi web panels. So, it, uh, they're really cool. Basically, along the side of Vivaldi, if you want to use the, uh, like a, a web page or whatever, and have it like docked in a panel along the side, so. I've been using it for Mastodon and for uh, Todoist. It just sits over there, and you they can you collapse them if you want them out of the way, and you can bring them back. They can be floating. They're really awesome. It does. The reason why I got into them was because Todoist stopped working for whatever reason, the flat pack version. So I had to use the web, uh, like a web tab, and I didn't want the tab pinned all the time, but I wanted it where I could get it. So I got was able to use the web panels. The Vivoli continues to be freaking amazing. Just putting that out there. I know proprietary thank you, thank software, you. but it's it's good stuff. But thank you, Matt. But in, uh, regarding uh, Vivaldi, officially now it's an official announcement. It's official. Vivaldi now exists on iOS. Yeah, and it's garbage, by the way. Yes, horrible. Sir. It's, it's <laughs> Sorry, basically. But yeah. It's it's not good. It's and it's not Vivaldi's fault, but the. The thing you use Vivaldi for is customization, and you can't customize their app at all. Like, I want to be able to move the address bar to the bottom. Like, literally, that's all I want to do. You can't do it. Um, anyways, oh. the, I'm assuming it's an iOS thing, the <laughs> limitation. Anyways, that is it for this podcast, guys. If, if you watch this live, God bless your soul. <laughs> I yeah, swear to God. Exactly. You're, uh, you're, you're a champ. You're yeah, a champ. This was, this, was, this was a rough one. We actually started this podcast over. I don't think we've ever had to do that before. <laughs> Anyways, we record this live every <laughs> Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to join us live, you can do so at the Linuxcast. Uh, excuse me, youtube.com slash Linuxcast. I didn't do any contact information. I'll, I'll do that real quick. Josh is at tenleyj.com slash stalker. Uh, Steve is at Fossadonda. Not stalker. Contact. contact. I knew that. Steve is at fossadon.org slash at zero Linux. Tyler has a YouTube channel. He doesn't remember how to get into it, um, but he's at youtube.com slash zanyog. Uh, so uh, youtube.com slash Linuxcast for me. Um, so follow all of us there. Record live every Saturday, 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Before I go, I should take one more thing. My current patrons, uh, if you want to support me, patreon.com slash Linuxcast. Also on Kofi, and there's a shop. So shop.linuxcast.org for merchandise. You can head over there to check all that stuff out. Um, thanks to everybody who does support me. It's, you guys are awesome. Without you, the channel would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. We we'll promise no technical dildos. difficulties next time. Dildos. Dildos for everyone. <laughs> why, why does he ruin everything? <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs>